We're here today to show you how to set up the Riga Planar One turntable. It's really pretty simple to set up. And when we're done, we'll give you a few tips on where to best place the turntable in your system to give you the best performance. Okay, the first step is you should hook your turntable up to your system. We think it's easier to do this first rather than get your turntable all balanced and have to move it around to get it connected up. So find the audio cables that are coming out of the back of the table. There's a red and a black. Red is for right, black is for left. Those connect up to your receiver or amplifier phono stage. It will need to have a moving magnet phono stage to connect up, so just plug those in. The next step is to connect the power supply for the turntable. This is what the end of the power supply looks like, and you simply connect it right here on the bottom side of the turntable. The other end goes into power. We've got our turntable out of the box and we're ready to go. We'll tell you the best place to put your turntable once we're done with the video. But uh, the first thing you want to do, there's a cardboard protection piece that protects the bearing of the inner platter. Just pull this out and set that aside. You'll want to keep that if you have to move your turntable. Make sure the belt is on the top pulley, it should be. And if you ever do want to change the speed of the turntable to 45, you just simply move the belt and put it on the bottom pulley. That will make it play at 45. But it should be on the top pulley for 33. The next step after the belt is uh, in the right spot is to just take the platter and gently center it up on the table. It will kind of self-align itself. Then grab your mat and center that up on the table. And we're good to go there. The next step is to put on the counterweight. On the Planar One, it is really simple. All you do is take the counterweight and just twist it on the back of the tone arm until it stops. There's a little break there, it will stop and it won't go any further. It's in the right spot when you've got it there. Then we want to take off the tape that's kind of holding down the tone arm and uh, some red tape, it should just come off and put that aside. We're almost there. The last and final step is to remove the stylus guard. So we want to just slide this straight off be sure to keep this, because if you move your turntable, it's a great way to protect your stylus. Okay, we're ready to play a record. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the Q lever is in the up position. This is down, this is up. And then we want to unlock the tone arm. It's a good idea to hold the tone arm so it doesn't accidentally fly across the record. So hold it with one hand and then unlock the mechanism right here with the other. We're ready to power things up now. The on-off switch for the Planar One is in the upper left-hand corner of the turntable. So just as a rocker switch, just flip it, the turntable starts spinning. Okay, we're ready to play a record. So we want to bring the tone arm over to the lead-in groove of the record. And Riga does a great thing. There's a tiny little indentation at the end of the tone arm to help you align it with the uh, lead-in groove. You can take a look at that. Then gently lower the cue mechanism, and off we go. Okay, the last step, once you're sure everything is sounding good, is to install the dust cover. It just goes in these little slots in the back, line it up, and close it, and you're good to go. We said we'd give you some turntable setup tips at the end. You have to remember that the output of a phono cartridge is really low, so don't ever add an extension to the cables that come with your turntable. Use them as is. The other point to remember is your turntable really should not be near speakers especially speakers that have deep bass. If you have some smaller powered speakers, it's probably okay for it to be on the same shelf, but it's really a good idea to keep your turntable as far away from your speakers as possible. And by far away, I mean five or six feet should be fine, just not really on the same shelf. If you can't do that, and you have speakers that have deep bass, see if your phono stage or receiver has a subsonic filter. That will help out and reduce any feedback that might occur. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our channel. On our channel, we review audio brands from all over the world. Thanks for watching.